Dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remind us that the best speech is the speech that proceeds from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Qur'an al-Majid. And the best guidance is the guidance that proceeds from the huda of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Sunnah. And the worst of all inclinations is the inclination that leads us towards innovation. And every innovation is a deviation. And every deviation is a road that goes astray. And all of the roads that lead astray are roads that inevitably lead to the hellfire. Dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us a very clear, well-known, oft-repeated admonition. In fact, this admonition is in the form of the order, the command. He said, Azza wa Jal, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and with beautiful, impressive preaching and argue, contend with the disbelievers in ways that are more convincing than their ways. And the ayah ends by saying, Verily your Lord knows best who goes astray from his path, and he knows best those who are rightly guided. O Muslims, I remind you and I remind myself that this order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to invite to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sabil rabbik, the sabil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is none other than the Quran and the sunnah. The hikmah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out to us here is the wisdom and the manner and the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And give wa'ad, warnings, lectures, preaching, teaching, which are impressive. Beautiful, thoughtful, invoking. And argue with them. That is, contend with them. Listen to their arguments attentively, respectfully. And after that, answer them with the proofs given to you by your Lord. Proofs which are clearer, more effective, more powerful, and more convincing than their arguments. And after that, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who goes astray from his path, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows those who are guided. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you and me with the saying, and to who is better in their speech than the one who calls towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they, after that, they perform 
righteous actions. And they say, Verily, I am from among the Muslims. O oh, Muslims, if we give no other evidence and no other proof of the excellence and the responsibility of the Muslims <coughs> to establish an official institution for calling and preaching and for exposing the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for confronting the falsehood of the unbelievers, this would be enough for us. And so, we want to talk about the importance of media. Dear Muslim brothers and sisters, what is media? Media is a means of public exposure. It is what is used against you. Even if you don't use it yourselves, it is used against you. It is what is used to cause you to become mud'i. That is one who is given da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, ud'u. He ordered us to become the du'at. But the media has made you and I mud'i, the receivers of da'wah. And this media has different forms. It has written form in the form of newspapers, magazines, pamphlets, booklets, textbooks, all of them used and specially designed to program the readers. Media is also the spoken word, radio, recordings, conferences, all of them designed to penetrate and to impregnate your minds and your hearts with sounds, voices, to replace the sounds and voices which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prefers for you. Media is also a matter of graphic display in the form of billboards, posters, signs, advertisements on the buses, the trains, every place you see in the form of cinema, television, and now through very graphically designed DVDs, a new technology that brings sound, graphics, vision, and interactive information technology all together at one time so as to bring you, as it were, the message live. All of this is media. Dear Muslims, this same media is what is being used to assault the Muslims throughout the world without their even realizing it. They are being assaulted. They are being raped. 
Our morals are being subverted through the media. Our religion is being distorted through the media. We and our families are being exploited and manipulated through the media. The Muslims all over the world have been traumatized. They have been paralyzed. They have been intimidated through the media. And this is why it is very clear that we need our own platform of media as an extension of our educational efforts. We need a platform of media as an extension of our dawah efforts. We need media and a platform of media as an extension of our social efforts. We need the media platform as an extension of our economic efforts. We need a platform of media as an extension of our efforts to clarify the religion. It is a matter of statistics that today television and media determines the values of individuals quicker and deeper than the educational institutions that they attend while they're children. This is a matter of statistics. It is also a matter of statistics that a child goes to school for seven hours a day. But most children in the modern world today, including your children and mine, they are engaged in media-related pastime at least another seven hours a day. Most of the schools our children go to are not Islamic schools. So they are exposed seven hours a day with non-Muslims and also non-Muslim education, although they're Muslims and they are praying and they are receiving moral, moral guidance at home. And in some cases, they are also going to a madrasa during the weekend and reciting some Quran. But nevertheless, they are receiving seven times five is 35 hours of non-Islamic education on a weekly basis. And the media, which our children are engaged in, even if you have some so-called Islamic videos in your home, some type of Islamic games in your home, for the most part, your children and my children, they are engaged in at least 80% of their media watching pastime with non-Islamic, immorally aimed, subversive, psychologically designed media which trains them to disrespect their parents, to disregard their values, to disregard the Salah, and to begin to have a feeling and to set up a value system for what the kuffar themselves have designed in their system and to prepare themselves to take a position in the kuffar system irregardless of what Islam and their parents are telling them. So you add 35 and 35, this is 70 hours a week. This is what you are combating with. This is what you are faced with. This is what you are confronted with. This is what you are fighting against. And it's a losing battle.
We need media as an extension of our da'wah. Unfortunately, go to the Islamic bookshops all over Australia, all over Sydney. Go to the larger bookstores and you will find plenty of books, plenty of pamphlets. But go to the video section and see what you find. Most of what you find is inferior video representation. Inferior. Inferior quality. Not well prepared. The lighting, the sound, the setting, the recording, inferior. Then go to Blockbuster. I don't have to tell you to go to Blockbuster. Most of you have membership. anything off the shelf in Blockbuster, anything, from the A-rated to the X-rated, pick it off the shelf and look at it, not for its content, look at the quality, the crispness, look at the advancement, look at the graphics, look at the color, listen to the sound, superior, trash, and for the Muslims, Go to the bookstores and see what is available there. Inferior treasure. So the kufar, they are making the investment to make trash superior. But the Muslims, they're not making any investment to make the treasure better than the trash. So what do you think your children prefer to watch? Some children's cartoons, movies, heroes about the companions of the Prophet wasallam, about Arabic language, about fiqh, about wudu, and all these things, which is inferior? No. They will look at it as long as you are home. But as soon as you go, home, go away, they put this inferior stuff to the side and that exciting, attractive, engaging material, they pull it out from underneath their beds where you don't even know it is. While you're sleeping, while you're at work, and they watch it. And in most cases, they don't even have to watch videos. They simply cut on the television which you have given them in their own rooms. Or they cut on the television which you give them access to. And they watch. And their little minds are burned out for every good word that you ordered them, for every good action that you encouraged for them, for every good thing that you told them to do. There's a thousand other images that gave them just the opposite. This is what media has done. And let me remind the brothers and sisters that in the Western Hemisphere, including Australia, there are 172 Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, non-Muslim religious-based channels. 172. Channels that are broadcasting seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Yes, and these people, they are paying for it, including the Qadianis. They are paying for it. They are very dedicated. All of their people are supporting that channel because it's their channel. So I asked the Muslims, here in Australia, in the city of Sydney, is there one channel for the Muslims? One. Of course, the answer is no. Not one for the hundreds of thousands of Muslims. And none of them are what you would call 
poverty-stricken Muslims, they're all well-to-do. They're all eating well. They're all driving cars. They all have television sets. They're all educated people. So why don't the Muslims have their own media platform? They haven't thought of it. They have, they're not willing to make the sacrifice for it. We need media as an extension of our social efforts. How does the truth about Islam, how is it conveyed to the world? Just as the distortions are conveyed throughout the world, how is the truth conveyed to the world if we don't have a platform? How does the Muslims turn away from being consumers for a system that exploits them? How can they take their economy and put this over into their own support for their own institutions through media? And how can Muslims cause the message of the Quran the, brilliant, the brilliance and the power of the sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, to be known to the world. How can we show the world the contributions that Islam has made to science and to medicine and to history and to civilization if we don't have a media platform? Dear Muslim brothers and sisters, my advice and my challenge to you is that we have to answer this question because when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will ask you and I about what we did in regards to this question dear Muslims the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned to us that whosoever recommends and supports a good action will receive the recompense of the one who does it without anything being diminished from it all the way to the day of judgment. And he also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the same hadith, whosoever recommends and supports an evil action will receive the recompense of the one who does it without anything being diminished from it all the way to the day of judgment. So my brothers and sisters, what I'm suggesting to you and I is that we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْأُدْوَانِ Your support indirectly of the non-Muslim media you are enjoining and you are supporting and you are collaborating and you are helping ism wal udwan sin and corruption and by talking about and by planning and making dua and making the investment for muslim media you will be doing just the opposite you will be collaborating you will be helping you'll be supporting helping to build and investing towards birr, goodness and taqwa, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the establishment of the Islamic principle in the society where you live. O Muslims, I realize that many Muslims come to the Salatul Jum'ah and they only want to hear about Salah and Zakah and fasting and hajj or tafsir or fiqh or what we call religious ritual issues but you will go back to your homes as you do every day and the issue which I'm speaking about today which may not appear to some of you to be religiously oriented you will be affected by it and Nastaghfirullah, some of us are enslaved by it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that he give you and me the ability to rise to this call, to respond to this call, to be aware of the importance of this call.